Hello everybody, I'm back with a new tutorial. As I promised, I made a new one for you to show you how to make the IKFK switch for a given arm. The concept of IKFK switch, I explained that in my old tutorial, you can find it on my YouTube channel. I actually went over all the process. I explained how you should create your joints by duplicating your uh, joint chain, how to make controllers for the FK setup, how to make controllers for the IK setup, how to match controllers orientation to your joints as well, how to make a hierarchy on your controllers, all of those processes that you need to do in order to make a complete IK FK arm for a given character. I explained that in that tutorial. However, since in that tutorial, I uh, used a set driven key method for creating the switch. Uh, I decided to make another tutorial to show you how to make it using a direct connection and reverse node in the node editor because it's going to be much easier to set it up. All right. So uh, if you want to follow the tutorial, make sure that you just check it out. Go up until the time that I'm explaining how to make the switch to work. The remaining part of it until I guess sometime around maybe 14 minutes or so. The whole concept is going to be the same. So let's go back to Maya. This is a simple arm that I'm using for this tutorial. And as you can see, I'm already having the bind joints. I'm having the IK joints. I'm having the FK joints. I also have the FK controllers already set up. And also I have an IK handle that is uh, directly constrained to the hand IK controller. So now if I just hide the uh, geometry you will see that my, IF, my FK controllers are controlling the FK setup. My IK controller is controlling my IK setup. And also I have, I have the uh, bind joints here that are uh, already skinned to the geometry. So if I grab one of these joints and I start playing with it, you can see that the arm is gonna get deformed. All right, so let's go back to the default pose for all of these. You have to make sure that you are in the default pose before doing anything else. I'm gonna go back to the default pose selecting all these controllers, zeroing out the values, all right, default pose. And one thing that you have to keep in mind, I mentioned that in my other tutorial, is that when you want to create the IKFK setup, you have to make sure that your joints are identical, and meaning that when you created the first series of joints, you should not create new ones. After fixing the orientations, you have to duplicate that chain twice and just rename your joints. And naming here is really important as well because it will make your connections much easier. So make sure that you follow this, the naming convention that I'm here suggesting. Uh, include bind joints, IK joints, and FK in the names, even for the controllers, because as I said, it's a crucial part of your uh, setup. So uh, it's time to make the, uh, the bind joints to follow these uh, IK and FK setup. And as you remember, and uh, as I explained in my other tutorial, you have to create three parent constraints coming from these driver joints, I will name them, the, uh, I will call them driver joints, and these are the bind joints. So I'll go one by one and select each one of these driver joints one by one and create one pan constraint per each joint. So arm FK, arm IK, arm bind, constraint parent. Do the same thing for elbow. Parent constraint and the last one, hand to the hand constraint okay so uh, now we are having three parent constraints right and if i test it out you will see that these are the bind joints that are actually going in between these driver joints so if i grab the ik controller you will see that the bind joints since they are having these constraints on them they are following these two parents right However, we want to only follow only one of them at the same time. So either we are in IK mode or in FK mode. So these joints are only supposed to follow either the IK or FK parents. And luckily with the parent constraint node, we see these weights here that are actually the, the name of parents that are used for, uh, for parent constraining. So for example, this is the constraint sitting on the elbow joint. And you can see that both IK and FK are influencing that with the same weight. So if you just simply control these weights, somehow uh, we can actually switch between different parents, right? So for example, if I want to go to FK mode, means that all these FK weights are supposed to be one on all of these constraints, and the IK weights are supposed to be zero, and vice versa. If I'm in IK mode, the IKs are supposed to be one, FKs are supposed to be zero. Okay, 
and since I don't want to go inside my hierarchy inside my outliner and change these values one by one I'll create one custom attribute on my hand extra controller to control all of these weights uh, all at the same time so again we have to do it in the default pose I'm gonna select all my controllers go back to default pose okay and first thing that we need to have is a uh, attribute to control these weights so in order to create that attribute you have to keep in mind that you should not uh, create that attribute on any of these ik and fk controllers at all because eventually we're going to take care of their visibility and in ik the fk controllers are going to be hidden in fk the ik controller is going to be hidden so we can't have access to that create that custom attribute that we are going to create eventually so for that reason i usually create an i mean you have to create a new extra controller for each hand i'm gonna just bring it over here and put it right on top of the geometry itself okay all right and in order to have some custom shapes for my controllers you, you can just go to the cv mode and change their shapes okay and i'm gonna name this uh, hand extra controller and since i'm only having one hand it's gonna be hand but eventually we're gonna have lt or rt for the left and right sides as well and extra control okay and i'm gonna add that custom attribute on it add attribute i'm gonna name it ik or fk it doesn't matter I'm going to make sure that its minimum and maximum is between 0 and 1 and hit add and now let's have this attribute to control the weights on these constraints all right so i'm going to start with the easy one which is when i'm having the ik set to zero it means that all these ik weights are supposed to be zero okay all of these are supposed to be zero when I set this to 1, all of those IK weights are supposed to be 1. So whatever value I put on this custom attribute, I should see exactly the same number on these constraints. Okay, so it's actually a direct connection, right? When I want to create a direct connection, I can go to connection editor or even I can go to the node editor to make that connection. For this one, because it's easy and I want to show you both ways to do that, I'm going to this time go to the connection editor connection editor and the left side is the attribute that is going to control some attributes on the right side so first I need to load my controller on the left side this is the custom attribute that I have created and it's going to control these weights on the right side so I'm going to load one by one these parent constraints the weights are going to found at the end of the list and again this IK whatever value that we have on it we want to have the same value on the IK joint okay IK directly connected to the IK I'm gonna load the other parent constraint directly connected to IK and I'm not holding anything I'm just clicking on these two attributes and uh, it's gonna make the connections immediately as you can see the attribute turned yellow which means that it's being controlled by another attribute and the last one I'm gonna load that one and I'm gonna create another connection here as well okay so we took care of that one which means that if I type for example 0.5 here you can see that 0.5 is going to show up on, a, on all of these IK weights on these pattern constraints okay now let's move on to the other weight which is for the FK joints and it's going to be a little bit more tricky because currently if I type 0 for my IK switch these attributes are supposed to be 1 if I type 1 these values are supposed to be zero so it's not a direct connection i need to reverse that i need to say whenever this value is zero i want to reverse it to one and use that here if that is one i want to reverse it to zero and use that here all right so it's not a direct connection we just need to reverse that value and in order to do that the easiest way to do it is doing it in the node editor okay so i'm going to go to the node editor by going to windows down here is node editor it will bring up the node editor uh, the navigation in the node editor is just like inside the Maya viewport you can hold down alt and right click and drag it will zoom in and out middle mouse click and drag it will uh, pan uh, in your node editor okay uh, I'm going to uh, need 
the the controller that has the attribute on it just like the connection editor we need to have a driver on the left side and a driven on the right side so the driver here is this controller that has this ik attribute on it i'm gonna select that controller let me get rid of this note here i will just select it and hit minus button here to remove that from the note editor so i will not just need to add this controller to my note editor i will middle mouse click and drag it over to add it here it will bring the shape node as well i don't need to see the shape node i'm going to remove it from the note editor if i click on these bars here it will expand it and immediately i can see the attribute that i have created all right so this is the driver i'm going to bring these constraint nodes here select all of them middle mouse click and drag it will bring them over here if I hit 3, it will do the same thing. It will expand them. All right. And you can see that they are already connected to this IK switch. This is, this is actually because we use the connection editor to connect this IK attribute to these IK weights on my constraints. This is the IK. This is the IK. You can see that they're all connected here. Again, I could do that in the node editor. I decided to do it in the connection editor. So when you make that connection, it will make a straight line going from this attribute on the right side to the left side here on the constraints. Okay, so read it from left to right. Now we need to take we need to take care of the other weight for the FK. So in order to do that, we need to reverse this value. Luckily, Maya comes with a reverse node. I will hit tab on my keyboard to bring up this uh, search button search field. And I will type in reverse, hit enter, it will create a reverse node. If I expand this reverse node, you will see that it accepts inputs and it will give us outputs. So whatever we give it in input, it will reverse it and put it in the output. So let's use just one of these inputs here. Whatever value that we give it, it will reverse it and it will put it inside the output, right? And you want to use it for the other weight on the parent constraint node which is the fk okay and the connection is made now let's test it uh, if you look at the values here they're all supposed to be yellow yellow so if you missed some of these connections uh, this is the way that you can check it out check all your parent constraints and make sure that all of those weights are actually yellow and they're actually reversed so they're not supposed to be equal all right, so now let's uh, have the IK controller move up. It's following that. Uh, let me uh, pose the FK setup. Cool. And now if I grab this controller and play with this attribute, you will see that my bind joints are actually rotating and they're snapping to the uh, IK and FK setup, right? Okay, point two, I wanted to just double check that. I think I'm having some skinning issues here, so uh, ignore that. But as you can see, the joints are actually going between the IK and FK. All right. So one more thing is taking care of this extra controller. It's cu currently it's not following the uh, setup at all. So I'm going to go back to the default pose. OK. And I will have this controller to follow the bind joint, not the FK, not the IK. So bind joint, hand extra controller, constraint, and eventually you will lock these attributes. And now if I grab this, you will see that that extra controller will also follow. Okay. So that's about it. I believe I covered everything and uh, you're good to go.